So John, why do we need a third host or for a witness? Why, what's, what's the real purpose uh, behind that for BSEN? Um, so this is at its core. Uh, the short answer is something called cap theorem. Uh, the long answer is, is you know, why, why do you see clustered systems that have uh, some type of additional, what's called a fencing mechanism or some type of additional quorum system? And there's different ways this has been done. Sometimes this is done with a share. Sometimes it's done with a stateful uh, application. Um, sometimes people did it with LUNs before, but this is not a, a new construct. Um, and there are clustering systems that have existed where you just had two systems and they, you know, they talk to each other. But what, what's, why did we go to that third system? Well, the reality is here is if you want to have to avoid a situation known as split brain, uh, this is where you have uh, both copies of a clustered system go active active without awareness of each other, start acknowledging transactions um, and potentially basically corrupting data. Um, you need something that basically holds down and says, hey, you know, you can't activate HA, you can't activate that second copy. We don't want a shadow VM running and acknowledging transactions. Um, so this is why we need that that third host or that witness. Now, that said, we can come very close to cheating cap theorem. So let's let's talk very quickly about what's been improved in seven update three. We now have the ability to shift kind of those votes that are used for establishing quorum. Um, Pete, you probably have a fancier term for this. Uh, I think what, um, how about adaptive quorum control? Yeah, I like that. Let's, let's use right. that. Let's All use right. that, ship it. So what this means is if I have a failure, so let's say I have my two hosts and I have my witness that's providing quorum above it. If one of these hosts failed, we now only have one host that has good copy or copies, if we're doing read inside the host now also, um, of data. So at this point, if the witness fails, you know, the, the witness and the other host, they're both have acknowledged the other host is dead to us. It's done. At this point, if the witness fails, historically, you would have gone offline because that remaining host would only hold one of the three votes. Well, instead, with this new behavior, if the witness and one of the hosts have both decided that the other host is dead and gone um, and out of synchronization, the, the witness can basically say, you know what, I'm really not that useful here. Here's my votes. And so at this point, the, the host itself will have quorum on its own and a subsequent failure of that witness would allow you to still remain active. And then in that case, you could still have, because there's three disk groups in the host and you have a witness component inside the host, you could have one of those disk groups even go offline. So you could have host failure, witness failure, disk group failure. The key thing is the can all happen at the same time. There needs to be time to reconcile and shift those votes over for this process to work. So this is, this is our attempt at being clever and cheating cap theorem and doing so in an automated fashion um, that doesn't require any manual failover. Right, right. No, that it, it certainly sounds a, a little bit on the magical side in, in terms of what it has to do uh, in order to maintain the availability. And I think it's worth noting uh, too is why we choose to have that witness in the first place is so that you don't have to do this stuff on a manual basis. When you think about uh, we are uh, determining the availability on a per object basis, well, think about how many dials you would have to turn if that was something that that you had to manually manage. And so, having the, that witness, it seems like you know, really in an automated fashion, is is uh, the best way to approach this this notion of availability in a fully distributed storage system. Yeah, no, this is this is definitely a uh, a lot easier. And one other thing, just to remember is. That witness host, it doesn't um, have to be lonely. It, it could actually be providing potentially uh, witness services to multiple two-node clusters, not not stretch clusters, but multiple two-node clusters. Uh, so that's another great operational efficiency. So I know some of you may have looked at two-node a long time ago and said this this makes some compromises that you know I'd rather just throw more hardware at and work around. I'd encourage everyone to look at this again for the nested RAID protection levels, the the a bit additional survivability. Um, in terms of handling, you know, staggered failures, as well as also just the cost efficiency of Direct Connect. 